G'day Ziggy D here and welcome to the day one guide for my seven day beginners arc build project. In this video I'll be going over and giving you guys uh, a guide to the leveling process for this character in a fair bit of detail too. Now uh, I've hit 49, it was a long and enjoyable day of Path of Exile. Firstly, uh, playing this character has been really fun so far, it's performed really well in the leveling process, and uh, also combining that and rolling that into playing a brand new league at the same time, the one month uh, race, has been really exciting. Like I've been having a good fun finding uh, cool uniques that I've been able to sell and also, you know, sort of getting into that new, uh, that new, that new fresh feeling you get with a new league in addition to combining things like uh, constant rogue exile encounters and the invasion bosses. It's been pretty exciting, challenging at times, especially some of those rippy invasion bosses, but it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. So, first thing I wanna, I wanna do is uh, sort of, I'm currently at level 49, I've got a pretty good idea of leveling process now, and it's gonna be a pretty straight shot into the end game, and then tomorrow I'll be able to take you guys through sort of the getting into end game, farming yourself up some wealth, things like that. Uh, if I switch over here for you guys, I'll draw your eyes to this new tab I've put on the uh, the build project spreadsheet. So we have the basic spreadsheet tab just here. If you click down on the leveling tab, you'll be able to get all the information for this leveling character. And I'll add to this as we go as well as I discover new things. Now I've also put down like a full list of uh, gems that you get from the quest rewards. Note that if there's not a quest reward here, you can simply sk uh, skip that quest or uh, just grab whatever gem you like and sell it or something like that. Because uh, these are the main ones you'll need in the build. And this is essentially when you get them. And it all works out really nicely too. Everything clicks together really well. The only things you'll have to purchase is a second arc, an empower gem eventually, uh, cast one damage taken or echo depending which way you go. I recommend purchasing cast one damage taken. And then our uh, Enduring Cry, everything else you're able to get yourself. So that works out pretty well. I put down some general leveling notes as well, though we'll go over that in this video. Okay, so in terms of skill progression, you'll start off using Fireball that you pick up on the very first beach, nice and easy. And this will actually carry you through the first couple levels uh, until you pick up Fire Trap and then Storm Call. As soon as you pick up Fire Trap and Storm Call, which is around level 4, you can switch to essentially using the combination of Storm Call Fire Trap. This is very powerful. Generally, you throw down a Fire Trap and then uh, kite mobs through the flames and stack up a few Storm Calls and sort of like just in front of yourself. And then as the mobs come to you, so if they're melee mobs, they'll come to you, then all the storm calls will go off and everything will get destroyed in one volley usually. Uh, otherwise, if they're ranged, you can just target a couple storm calls on them and spread them out a little bit like that. Storm calls really good leveling skill, especially for those early levels. So it works really nicely and fire trap just sort of gives you that nice added damage and give you a bit more mobility as well. Generally, the process is uh, really try and push through the zones like kite mobs into other mobs. So group everything up to take advantage of the AOE of fire trap and storm calls. So essentially run th past a mob pack, draw it to another mob pack and then burst them all down. That's the general leveling strategy and that's generally what's going to give you a huge amount of speed and uh, sort of a nice feeling for leveling this character. Now at level 19 you'll be able to start using arc. It might be you know a couple levels of, you know it might be a couple levels after that depending on how slow you've been with the leveling process but you'll generally get arc around this point and you can start using it. At that point you're going to be using the combination of arc and storm call. Arc is pretty decent this early on but until it gets its additional chains so as arc levels up it gets addition, ad, additional chaining effects uh, you're better off using uh, storm call against some mobs usually single target is better at storm call and then really large groups of mobs are better at storm call so if it's something like a bunch of squids storm call will do better or if it's a single target storm call better but arc does really well for spread out mobs and things like that or like you know three four mobs stuff like that is much better with arc so you'll you'll, you'll get the feel of it sort of same idea keep kiting mobs through and just use arc and storm call you can keep using fire trap at this point fireball you should have already kick, kicked off to the you know wayside uh, and eventually you'll find that fire trap stops really adding much and you're better off spending your time using just storm call and arc now around level 30 i couldn't quite put pick up the exact level where this was but somewhere around level 30 storm call stopped being useful and at that part arc was more than enough. Arc was good single target DPS, Arc was good AoE, like great medium sized AoE and pretty good large AoE as well. You'll start getting those additional chains on the Arc gem and that'll start getting really really effective as a leveling skill. Probably one of the most effective leveling skills I've used, though that's this is in an Arc build obviously, so you have the passives to support this and to make it powerful. 
So uh, that makes that makes a lot of sense, you know. Uh, something like Flame Blast is good on a build where you don't get any investment, but since we're getting Arc investment, uh, Arc works really well. Now for the leveling process, I have been using Arc with Added Lightning. So you pick up Added Lightning pretty early on, and uh, you'll want to you know make sure you're leveling that up in your Arc as soon as possible. Just as a side note, as soon as you get your first Arc, I really recommend trying to purchase a second Arc so you can level them side by side. They sh those should be the same level. It will really save you a lot of trouble in the long run, so I highly recommend doing that. So I leveled with Arc, added Lightning, and then Lightning Penetration until I was able to get a bit of currency together to purchase an Echo. You can use um, Arc, added Lightning, Lightning Pen, Arc, added Lightning, Faster Casting, or Arc, added Lightning, Echo. The Arc, added Lightning, Echo combination has felt the best to me so far, and that works really well just on the 3-link. Now, around level 35, I, I picked up Eldritch Batter in the Passive Tree. I'll go through the uh, Passive Tree sort of layout in a little bit more detail, but this is pretty important because then I was able to start running Discipline, Clarity, and then uh, a low-level Arctic Armor together as well, and uh, never really have any mana problems. Surprisingly, I had zero mana problems at all. I thought Arc would be pretty mana-hungry, but just running and leveling up a Clarity, and I kept leveling up Clarity every time it was ready for a level, I leveled it up and uh, never had any mana problems whatsoever. So this build works out really nice in that regard. Around level 40, you get Spell Totem, and then I linked that with my second Arc that I had been leveling up. So make sure you're leveling that up. Again, this was on a three link, Arc, Spell Totem, and Faster Casting is really good once you get that Fast Casting. But even just Arc and Spell Totem is pretty nice at a DPS. Basically, whenever there's a larger pack or a boss or you know an invasion boss or something difficult, a pack of rares or a champ pack or something like that, you'll throw down your Spell Totem, you'll use your con Conductivity or Elemental Weakness Curse, and then you'll start Arcing yourself. And the combination of Arcs gets really effective, lots of shock stacking, lots of damage going out, and that's where I'm up to so far in terms of those milestones. So you'll notice in the uh, the skill linking uh, planning I talked to you guys through, I mentioned three links on both the normal arc and the spell totem arc. Now the reason for this is that you're going to be running these in plus one wands or scepters. Scepters are a better choice. For some reason I've only been able to find wands or be able to do this with wands, but generally wand, uh, scepters are fine. All you need to do is find a three linked wand or scepter, and then, uh, you know, preferably with the colors you want to save you a bit of currency, finding those pre-three-linked ones is mandatory. You can get away with two links early on before you get all your support gems, but eventually you're going to want those three links. And what this does is it crafts a plus one to uh, level of lightning gems in this item. Now, spells scale their damage uh, significantly off of gem level, and also added lightning damage uh, on your main spell, it also scales its damage off gem level. So plus one essentially increases this to where the fact the point where you're out leveling content. So the way you create this is quite simple. You get your three linked wand, you make sure it's blue, this one happens to have plus one to another thing, but just ignore that. <laughs> so you use a transmute on it, so this costs one transmute, maybe a little bit extra to buy it. And then you need a topaz ring. If you don't, if you can't find a topaz ring, you can buy an iron ring and then trade an iron ring plus a green gem to get a topaz ring back. So that's an easy way to craft yourself for topaz rings. You can vendor recipe to make another vendor recipe, and then you need to just simply go to any any vendor, sell your magic wand or scepter sell an alteration and sell a topaz ring all together and you get a plus one to level of lightning gems in this item wand or scepter back now once you get that you can simply cross your fingers and augment it and see what you get i got car speed that's actually an upgrade for me that's a sick upgrade so we've done pretty well just there in fact i will be replacing my main hand weapon just here with this one all we're going to do is put our arc in here put our added lightning damage in there, and put our spell echo in there. And then for your spell totem setup, you're just gonna be arc, faster casting, and then spell totem just there. So nice and easy, two, two, gray, two blue and a red, really easy to get, and then three blue is very easy to get on these guys. So we did all right in this. Okay, so I'm gonna take you guys step by step through my passive tree. Now, as always, because this is early on in this project, the passive tree might change in the long run, like the overall shape of the passive tree, but this should give you a bit of an idea of the routes I've taken and how it's worked for me. Initially I started off in the Witch section, I grabbed the Spell Damage and went all the way up to Elemental Dominion just here. At that point I then went back to the start here and picked up the Mana Regeneration through into the Life Nodes. I then picked up the Flask Effect Nodes, came outside of which, went down to here and pretty much grabbed uh, Alacrity and Physique straight away to help with um, 
physique to help with equipping armor ES gear, which should be a priority in, ge in general le while leveling, especially because we'll be getting an Eldritch Batter a little bit later on. And uh, also just equipping nice, it just gives you nice flexibility in the gear you can actually equip. Uh, Alacrity is pretty important for Arctic Armor, but also for equipping good gear. Just getting the 30 plus on both of those makes things nice and easy. Now at this point you can grab this life cluster, and it's a pretty good life cluster, so I do recommend doing that. From there, I, head down, I headed down into this way and I went into Shadow. I grabbed the Cast Speed and then I grabbed the Shock Cluster just here. Uh, you can also grab the Life Nodes just here. The 12% Life Nodes are fantastic, quite clearly. At this point, I went back and grabbed the Lightning Damage Nodes from which just to boost my damage a little bit further. Probably not really necessary in hindsight. Like, you have pretty good damage by that point even without those. And you might be better off spent just trying to traverse the passive tree a little bit quicker. So from this point, I went and picked up Eldritch Battery. So after picking up that, I went and picked up Eldritch Battery. I then, straight after picking up Eldritch Battery, so pretty much once you get Discipline, Clarity, and um, Arctic Armor going, uh, you can uh, pick up this cluster essentially to do that. By the time you get the Influence node, you'll be able to run Discipline, Clarity, and uh, like a level 5 Arctic Armor together. Depends on your exact gearing situation, it might be a little bit lower, but uh, you can run a low level Arctic uh, Armor essentially. I picked up a, quality, a 10 quality one, which gave me a bit of move speed, so it was, it was worthwhile doing that for a bit of extra mitigation and the move speed as well. From that point, you can head down. I went down and grabbed Harrier, because two points for some nice car speed, move speed, pretty nice for leveling. And then I came across through this way here. The plan is then to go up into more, into Templar, and I'm positioning myself to I'll cut up through this life here and start taking these uh, aura nodes just here. So the idea is going to be to get uh, these aura nodes these aura nodes and we already have this aura cluster and uh that in combination with eldritch battery is like the core of the build done on that uh, from that point onwards it's just going to be about picking up life and damage so i recommend probably around that time also picking up the life and mana nodes you know completing the life wheel here picking up these life and mana nodes picking up these life nodes picking up static blows you can kind of uh wing those as you like but uh, generally you're going to be filling those out. And then once you're getting to, I think once you're drawing to level 60, you're probably going to want to start heading down through this way. So as we get closer to level 60, we're going to head down this way, go into Marauder and get the Diamond Skin and Lightning Resistance node. At that same point, we'll probably want to pick up Elemental Adaptation once we're past level 60. So that we should have capped resistances by then, hopefully, so you can pick up the Elemental Adaptation and increase your maximum Lightning Resist by quite a bit. From that point onwards, it's just going to be about filling out damage. You know, you can pick up the extra spell damage. You can pick up anything else you've missed it. You can pick up nimbleness cluster, stuff like that. Extra spell damage, cast speed, and extra life clusters, and all that jazz. And that's pretty much the build. It's really quite basic. There's not much you really need at certain points while leveling this character. You basically just want to make sure that you've taken Eldritch Battery nice and early. You can pretty much rush to that. Uh, and then uh, that you've got the aura stuff set down by the time you're reaching endgame because you don't want to have to be trying to go and get those aura stuff because you really need to be running that uh, clarity, de uh, discipline, and uh, arctic umber combo and you also want to be able to have enough mana space to run purity of lightning as well. So the only other thing I want to mention is the inner force cluster just here. You really want to leave this until last thing. This is like the last thing you pick up. Because although inner force does buff your auras, it also buffs your uh, arctic armor costs. So it increases the cost of arctic armor. It does increase the mitigative effect of arctic armor. But it's an end game optimization. You really want to leave that until last. So hopefully you guys have found this helpful. I've had a lot of fun leveling this build. And I'll be keeping you guys uh, up to date on all of the different uh, things in this build. Uh, as I continue progressing through the week. Had a really good day streaming it today. Over 700 people watching, and uh, it was, we had a really good time sort of talking about the build and leveling in it. So anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.